Hey folks, welcome to Market Intraday Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. This intraday analysis video is for Thursday, October 14th, 2010. Well, folks, we are seeing some selling in the market. Currently, we're right around support here, at least intraday support at the yellow trend line. The yellow trend line, again, was a key level. If you stretch back and you connect all these highs going back really to mid to late September, you can just connect them right through, and that's what we're retracing back down to. We broke above it a couple days ago, ran up yesterday, and then came sharply back down over the last, you know, few trading hours in this market. Now, going back intra intraday as we zoom back in here, what you can see is you are on that trend line currently. The question is, we did close below, but you have not confirmed. Remember, confirmation is a key proprietary technique that we have utilized to really call key levels and key moves in the market, whether or not there's a breakdown or not, and you do not have confirmation yet, and you see a little bit of a bounce coming in right around that level. So that's a good call right there as you're seeing a minor bounce. Now, it could head lower, and I do think eventually today it may head lower because, again, we took out the 10 o'clock morning low. This is very important important to understand, folks. Every morning, whenever you have a sell-off, and there haven't been many over the last six weeks or so, but the sell-offs seem to be making the lows around 10 o'clock. For instance, scan back. Just two days ago, we sold off in the early session, and the low was put in right here at 10 o'clock. Today, again, same thing. You sold off right around 10 o'clock. You put in a low and started to move up. However, Today, we are seeing further selling. So again, it does make me wonder if there's a little bit more to the sell-off today than what meets the eye, which is, again, just a normal float down. I mean, right now, the markets are barely negative. In all fairness, we're barely negative. So I don't want to jump the gun here in any regard. The Dow is only down 39 points. NASDAQ down 9. S&P down about 6.5. Basically, a half percent on the S&P with a third of a percent drop on the NASDAQ and Dow. But bottom line is, you have to look for these little cracks in the ice or cracks in the glass. And this is something that I pointed out to my chat room this morning, which, by the way, every one of you should be in that chat room if you just have one hour a day to listen in and ask questions. So important in the intraday stock chat. Again, guidance, learning, education, swing trades. You can ask your questions. We'll answer them all. It's all inclusive in that chat room. And again, it runs all day while the markets are open, and you can pop in and out whenever you have time. That's the beauty of it. In any case, going back to the markets here, this morning there were beginnings of cracks in the ice or cracks in the glass in this market. We all know the market's been held up by the Federal Reserve. I mean, the dollar's getting crushed again today. It's just not having the same impact because of the negative economic news today. But I mean, the Federal Reserve has out, been out there saying that they want to crush the dollar to create inflation, so they're basically printing money, which is causing the drop in the dollar. And as they print money and throw money into the system, it's propping the markets up. Remember, a 10% drop in the dollar, and take a look at the daily dollar chart. Let me go to the daily dollar chart. You want to see an amazing chart? Here's your daily dollar chart. Look at the dollar going back to really uh, July. June, July, right here. I mean, look at that drop. So a drop in the dollar technically means the market, to keep its natural value, its real value, must increase by the same amount. So a 10% drop in the dollar should mean that equities go up 10%. Otherwise, you've actually had a loss in the equity price, in the real value. For instance, if you have a dollar bill, right, and it, the dollar drops by 10%, it's only worth 90 cents. However, if that dollar bill happens to somehow turn itself into a dollar ten. Then if it drops 10%, it really just takes you back to the even level. So you have to have a little give and a take. So if the dollar's dropping, whatever is going the opposite direction or whatever's valued in dollars must go up that same amount to keep its real value. So it explains why the Federal Reserve wants to inflate the market or inflate the dollar by printing lots to decrease the price of the dollar so the markets can inflate. It creates a false sense of wealth. And again, by doing that, you get consumers to think things are better. You get, hopefully, businesses to start start hiring. I don't think it's going to work. And I think we saw today the first indications that it's not going to work. And what we're doing here, what the Federal Reserve is doing, is going to cause more problems to the point where you don't even want to know what's going to happen. I mean, you're going to see some of the worst issues you've ever seen in your lifetime. You thought what we went through over the last three years was bad? Not even close when this is all said and done in about three to five years, folks. So I warn you now... The path that we are on is treacherous, and chances are there's about a 95% chance we will be falling off that cliff at some point in the next few years. All right, short term, it looks like it's working. Granted, the average American is not that intelligent. They don't understand what's going on. It's not their fault. They just aren't told. The media, they listen to the media. The media pumps what they're told to pump, and that's the way it goes. Okay, But bottom line is, today you saw producer price indexes, producer price indexes coming out. That's an inflation gauge up four-tenths of 1%. That's very hot. 
Now, if you take out food and energy, as, as most economists say, oh, we'll take out food and energy, then it's only up one-tenth of a percent, which is about in line with expectations. But in my opinion, you can't take out food and energy. How do you take out the two things that people spend the most money on? All right, People spend the most money in realistic terms probably on housing. All right. Well, those are that's if people are paying their mortgages. I mean, now that they've stopped the foreclosures uh, in most, I think, all 50 states about, you know, people can just stay in their houses forever, apparently, and not have to pay anyways. But <laughs> bottom line is most people pay um, pay their mortgages or their rent, and that's the biggest expense a month. Then comes food and energy. So how do you discount and say, oh, food and energy doesn't matter? Of course it matters. So if you have a rise, a massive rise in food and energy, that's actually the thing that's going to be the most costly to Americans. It's going to work as a tax on Americans, folks, bottom line. And this is the dropping of the policy. The drop dollar policy is going to result in inflation in food and energy first. Eventually, it will trickle down to other things like clothes and cars and you know other things as well, which, again, will come in, into play. But bottom line is you have to understand what's going on here, folks. And as we watch this market getting a little bit of a bounce here, I just wanted to explain that to you. The starting scene here is the PPI jumping on the food and energy. To me, that's a big deal. It's the one thing where if that thing keeps rising, you will see political pressure being put on the Fed to actually stop uh, dropping the dollar. Right now, they're going to continue to do it, folks. Just understand that. Yes, there'll be a little bit of a bounce here and there, and I think we are close to a bounce on the dollar. Uh, very close here as we're nearing the 2009 double bottom low, and I can show you that if we go back to the UUP. Take a look at this, folks. Let me go back to the daily chart. If we zoom out, you can see your double bottom from 2009 is not that far away now. We're very, very close to this area here, really about 10, 15, 20 cents away on the UUP. But bottom line is, again, you have to understand the kind of the keys to this market that are going to be influencing the market going forward. And the, the Fed is still out there pounding the dollar down. They're going to continue to do so unless there's political pressure or unless inflation starts to rear its ugly head. The market has priced in QE2 at this point, probably about a half trillion to a trillion dollars of QE2. If it doesn't happen, the markets will freak out. Uh, if it does happen, it's factored in. The only way the markets will continue up, in my opinion, higher is if the dollar continues to go lower. Uh, that will be the goal of the Federal Reserve, folks. They're doing this. It's not a question anymore. It is 100% guaranteed that's the policy of the Fed. They've come out and said, we want inflation. Okay, well, yeah, but then what about those fixed retirees on income, the baby boomers that have a fixed income? Well, now all of a sudden, food and energy costs a lot more. That's what they're, fe they're feeding and, clo and warming themselves or cooling themselves, so now they have more expenses. The average, it basically works as a tax. Just think of it like that. You're taxing the public by doing this. Now, I'm not opposed to having the dollar go up and down a little bit or come down a little bit here and there, but let it do it naturally. All right, what's going on right now is the Federal Reserve in a currency war trying to drop the U.S. dollar faster than anyone else can drop their currency. Now you see the dollar at parity with the Australian dollar and the Canadian dollar. It is just a catastrophe waiting to happen if it continues. If it stops right now, it's not that big a deal. But I'm saying their policy is not going to be to stop it right here. Not at all. Understand that, folks. Eventually, it will be turning into a negative. The dollar dropping will cause this market to literally uh, semi-crash, in my opinion. Not another flash crash scenario, but you could see multiple days in a row where you have down two, three, four hundred points in a row. Um, and again, that's down the line here. We're not there yet. I'm just giving you a warning sign. Now, going back to the market here, which we are trading near the highs, uh, still overall, if you zoom out or if you go to your 60-minute, you can see we're still up in the upper ranges. Yes, we're down a little bit today, but look at the chart here. I mean, unbelievable move up. Now, again, we are coming down. If we go back to the intraday, I just told you to expect a little bit of a bounce here. That's a beautiful scalping opportunity my traders in the chat room would have utilized right there. Beautifully done. And again, now once you've got your bounce, you take your money out of this market and look for a little bit of a pullback. Now, today, as I said, the first crack in the glass or the ice is because of that PPI number. In addition, jobless claims came out. We got below 450,000 last week. We're back above 450 this week. That is a bearish sign. 463,000 is a very bearish number number considering the market was very hopeful now the market's only down a little bit on the day in all fairness you're down 55 cents on the SPY the Dow is only down right now folks get this 30 points now why why are you only down 30 points when you had um, a trade deficit number that was ugly this morning you had jobless claims which were not good and you had a PPI number that was a little hot the answer to that is the dollar. The dollar is continuing to get pushed down. Federal Reserve, thank you very much. And you can see it's come off the lows a little bit. But this is where we closed yesterday, folks, right here. This is where you closed yesterday. Look at where we are now. The dollar is down dramatically. And notice how the dollar dropping in this one candle here. This is a 10-minute candle. Look at how that's propping the market up on the SPY. See the green candle? 
This is just to give you guys an example of how exactly this works hand in hand. The dollar will drop and the markets will get a bid. And again, why? Because I just explained it. Currency dropping, the U.S. currency dropping, you have to have an equal move up in the markets to maintain fair value. The, the real value of the markets or any stock or any commodity must go up equal to the dollar drop to maintain its fair value. Now, you have other outlying circumstances where markets look bullish or bearish based on economic news or earnings news. We get Google after the bell today. J.P. Morgan, by the way, the financials are getting crushed today. Absolutely crushed. JPM down a buck twenty. They had earnings yesterday morning. Look at what the stock's done since they reported earnings. Ouch. Goldman Sachs getting hammered. Look at Goldman down a buck eighty today. Uh, Bank of America down sixty eight cents. That's a huge drop on Bank of America. And Wells Fargo down a buck twenty. Financials are lacking in any sort of rally today. Very weak. And again, I wish I had more time in this video to go over stuff because there's so much. Join the research center. Get involved now. This is the time to get involved. Join that research center at inthemoneystocks.com. I will talk to you more about this in tonight's thirty to forty minute video that I will do. Take care, folks.